life is tough and at times it can be extremely painful as we are experiencing these days life gives us an opportunity to learn from these painful experiences and as well from the joyful experiences allow me to share today with you a metaphor of pencil every day this pencil faces painful experiences and challenges in order to become useful and grow i call this painful experiences as an opportunity through which we will character and grow and through these experiences we learn how to make and use this and not not to make this costly mistakes and to use this mistakes to become better in life these mistakes this mistake this this kind of a pencils they come with a eraser you can erase this costly mistakes and use the learning to become better and to grow our character in our lifetime like these pencils we should continue leaving a positive mark wherever we go today global society of human capital management travels to thailand in our quest to share with you some of the great hr jewels and who are leaving a very positive and indelible mark in hr profession and on to the people around them we have today with us such a wonderful hr jewel Please welcome Mr. Jolly Matthew. Jolly Matthew is area director host engagement, Soneva, Thailand. We learn about Soneva from him, and um, he has done exceptional thing in HR domain. He is regarded as one of the HR thought leader, and uh, he is not only regarded as one of the leader in hospitality sector but he is also regarded as an hr leader who is driving the hr profession with excellence jolly welcome to the show coffee with hr star let us know something about you first before we commence our talk uh, thank you mr sandeep you. Um, for inviting me to this coffee session Uh, this is my post dinner cup of coffee it's 11 pm in bangkok and for those of you in other part of the world uh, good afternoon or good morning uh, as say you introduced i'm a hotelier and a chair professional uh, both are people's profession as a hotelier not just because i graduated in hotel management uh, but has been working in this luxury hotels and resorts all through my career and completed 25 years uh, this year in hospitality as in hr i currently work as a area director for host engagement and uh, head the learning and development function for the company as well uh, and i'm based at the corporate office in bangkok and i joined back the company in 2016 welcome jolly to the coffee with hr star this is a show we welcome um, distinguished hr leaders thought leaders and uh, they have done exceptional well in their career and they are leaving a important mark in the hr profession and as we go on to explore that how you have built your such an exceptional and such a nice career uh, over a period of time uh, let me first ask you what is the 
recipe of your successful career? Um, I would say there is no secret recipe in this. There are so many factors. Uh, let me try to list a top few in my case. Um, I was an associate professor with Manipal University earlier in my career, and it was nearly for a decade. And later worked as a learning and development manager, HR and training manager, HR director, and before being in this role in an area position. I would first say it's identifying your career anchor, that what is your competencies, motives, or career values are. Um, you need to understand what makes you tick to at the workplace. And also what you find important and how you're motivated to achieve those goals that is ahead of you, um, either personally set or that of your employer. And that's one of the reasons I even returned back to Suneva. Um, second, I would say is good mentors uh, within and out uh, within and outside the industry. Uh, promotions and employer recognitions, of course, they do make a, a part of it. And I would say there is a, uh, there's a saying by Albert Einstein, it says, once you stop learning, you start dying. I did my BHM, I did my CHE, MBA, uh, a practitioner of neuro-linguistic uh, programming, timeline therapy, Reiki, NLP coaching. So uh, numerous uh, MOOCs, which has been done. Um, I did my chartered fellow uh, in CIPD. So I would say learning should not stop. And that's one of the key aspects in making a career. And uh, obviously, good work never goes unnoticed. And do your best, and the rest will follow you. Wonderful. Now, before we get into a little bit very interesting question, tell us how things are shaping up in Thailand. And tell us about something about Suneva, because we heard a lot about this luxury resort. And uh, I'm sure people all around, not only in the HR community, but all across the world would like to know about Suneva and the hospitality of Suneva, in specific in Thailand. Um, Suneva is known as uh, for its luxury hospitality, which pioneered uh, slow life and sustainability can go ahead. So uh, Suneva believes in a concept where luxury and sustainability coexist, and we call it intelligent luxury. And we have uh, smartly packaged in such a manner that you know the, our guests come here for those unique experiences, uh, which which is quite unique to Suneva and they have they have a responsible holiday with, uh, of course, it's luxury. We are at remote but accessible locations. Uh, right now, Suneva is in Maldives with Suneva Fushi and Suneva Jani. And in Thailand, we have Suneva Kiri. And talking about Thailand, um, yes, we are equally affected as uh, the rest of the world is. Um, if you go by the numbers, yes, perhaps this is a stage in which we have quite big numbers of COVID cases. Uh, the industry is not in the very best shape. Uh, but as far as Saneva is concerned, um, I think we are doing quite well uh, for co compared to our competition and what the market is. Um, this is purely because of the care and attention to uh, the, the COVID testing and the kind of uh, SOPs in place to ensure that the guests have a uh, safe and memorable holiday with us. Excellent. So now um, our next question, since it's a coffee with HR staff, that how do you keep your career fresh as a freshly brewed coffee? <laughs> okay, uh, since you took the analogy of a coffee itself, see the uh, a variety and quality of the bean is one aspect. And uh, based on how it is and where it is grown, so it's all in career also it's about how you grow the learning professional environment the qualifications and the quest you have to find what is new be it technology or hr practices um, second obviously is roasting and obviously and it's at a very uh, you know high and right temperature getting exposed to the heat from the factors affecting in your business your industry and there is a lot of opportunity for learning even in um, disaster including this COVID. And uh, even I have also learned a lot during the last uh, year and a half. Third is the quality of temperature of water and the micro or macro climate that affects your job or your profession. And uh, we talk about volatility, uncertainty, complexity, and ambiguity. And this has been there. And you always need to be updated what is happening around the world and even in your profession. And uh, this is what makes me keep stay fresh and excited about. 
Excellent. Uh, now you have, uh, uh, Jolly, you have been in HR for uh, quite a long time now. And uh, uh, first of all, this designation is very, very interesting. You know, area director host engagement. Uh, and uh, this is unusual for, uh, you know, in HR domain. So before I go for my next question, so just give us some uh, interesting thought about, you know, how it, this uh, designation is, you know, it looks very, very interesting from the uh, point of view of hospitality, plus maybe some uh, people from the other domain can or other function in the HR or other industry can take a cue from it. Um, that's a nice question. Uh, this is something which uh, many people ask me. And it's very quite a unique designation. The word host engagement is, uh, we kept it from the point of how emotionally the employees are connected to the organization. That's true, that, that's the, uh, the true essence of the word engagement. Um, HR, um, it it's all its functions, yes, but we try to see that the bonding which an employee have with the employer or the brand or even the job, that makes a whole league of productivity and how they are engaged. I, earlier in, I mentioned that I returned back to the company. Um, I worked for about uh, five years and I left for six years and I returned back in 2016. So this year, I again complete five years with the company. And uh, one of the key reasons was how I was connected to the ethos of the company, the values, the, 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 the way in which the company stands for in sustainability and also areas of HR domain, how employees, we call it as host, how hosts are taken care of. So H host engagement gives you that platform to, uh, to ensure that our hosts are engaged, emotionally connected with the brand, uh, with their job, and they are able to exceed guest expectation. And we work in a hospitality industry where emotional connect and connectivity and the true essence of service come from that. <laughs> So here the next um, thing we want to know from you is you have shown us a very, very interesting uh, your designation. And then that brings to a new thought that HR domain or HR profession in totality is undergoing a lot of changes over the last one decade. The changes has been extremely rapid. And how do you visualize that how the HR is changing, not only from the dimension of uh, point of view of hospitality sector, but the, from the overall perspective, how it is emerging, how it is changing with the times? Um, that's a great question. Um, no one predicted this pandemic. And uh, these days, when you ask to most of the people, the background to what our responses are generally this pandemic, what we are going through. So this is not the first and certainly not the last. And we all are already more prepared to deal with this current challenges than we were 12 months back. And we hear the word resilient quite often. As the working world evolves to become more complex, I would say that the global HR will not really be just HR anymore. The next generation of HR leaders, they need to be having skills in marketing, perhaps, uh, brand management, information technology, finance, corporate relations, and even community activism. Now, experts, you can see, they call it as organizational engineering. HR professionals need to be experts in the new way of working. Uh, we need to be facilitators of virtual team effectiveness. Uh, we need to be developers of all types of leadership. And one of the key things is being an expert in uh, talent transitions. We see a lot of changes in re uh, restructuring, reassessing competencies for job roles as well. And uh, HR leaders um, have a bigger role, you know, being a global talent scout, a convener or a coach. Uh, we are advocates of equality, diversity, and inclusion. Uh, and a life coach, uh, we, today in the COVID scenario, it's about emotional well-being and happiness should, it should, should take um, much more uh, forefront. And uh, many organizations are doing that. And uh, the, the point which I mentioned about the community engagement is, it is not just to tick the, the CSR box, but HR leaders should be com community engages. Um, the corporate social responsibility leaders, and definitely they can be they can influence beyond organization and shape policies, regulations, and laws. You know that support the new world. 
Um, um, on this, I would say, you know, recently I took a volunteering leave in December, and that was with the Karen tribes in Mesod in the north of Thailand. I stayed in the village, um, which was very remote, even without uh, power grid. And I was also associated with the hospitality school there. Uh, it's called HCTC, um, who support this community, that's uh, the tribal community. And um, I, I was also in discussion with the NGOs to work with the Myanmar refugee camps, the migrant workers. So there's a lot that we can do. And uh, the shaping of the, 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 the HR in the future is to take up multiple roles beyond the processes within your office. Now you have uh, taken a um, couple of uh, very important certifications, uh, Jolly. You have done Chartered Fellow from the CIPD. You have done, uh, again, another Chartered Fellow from uh, Australian Human Resources Institute. So that brings us to the very, very um, curious question that uh, why, oh, first is, do you need a global HR certification? And uh, why do you need the global HR certification? Just the MBA is not enough. Uh, that's a good one. Um, say, if you would go buy a new laptop, what would you do? You will look for a global brand. You buy the, you know, for the best operating system, and of course, that fits your budget. Um, I would say it's. We look at professional effectiveness. You know, it gives you the skills and knowledge, and to bring value to the job, your profession, your business, your stakeholders, and I mentioned even about the community too. Um, even in career advancement, uh, global statistics show that a good, suitable certification can give you up to 29% greater chance of getting a promotion. So why would people not um, get a valid certification which is global? And uh, definitely international benchmarking, uh, CIPD, SHRM and others help you take stock of your uh, core knowledge or core behaviors and be uh, quite effective and impactful in your role. So that was one of the reasons I went uh, for these certifications. Uh, Jolly, you know, these are the global HR certification. You know, you've got a CIPD, you have taken the CIPD certification, which is from the CIPD UK, regarded as one of the oldest certification body in the UK. Then you have got a HRCI certification, Human Resource Certification Institute, USA, which is one of the oldest in the USA, SHRM certification, they have launched the two new certification program. They are they were also in and they are in the US, but they were earlier part of the HRCI community. And then you have taken a AHRI certification from Australia. And then you have got HRPS certification program from Canada. And you have got a ADD certification, specially designed for learning and development and profession, uh, performance management professionals. And then you've got Global Society of Capital Management uh, Societies certification programs. Now you have gone very specifically for uh, CIPD certification. So tell us what was, how, what was the reason for it? And I think so you've gone through a, a unique process that we'll talk in the next question. Obviously, I look for several options and there are quite a few certifications available and you have displayed it. And um, in fact, I went through most of them. And CIPD, which is the Chartered Institute of Personal and Development, is a, is a world-renowned HR certification body, which is based in the UK. Uh, they have the regular, which is the study route, as well as the experience assessment. And this is the best option for those who are working. Uh, well, uh, we all have our professional obligations and targets, so I did not have the time for a regular program, uh, but had years of experience in HR to qualify for the, and applying for this Chartered Fellow, which is the highest level. Um, you asked me whether MPA was not, uh, wasn't that enough. But as an HR and LND professional, uh, what my experience is that most employees desire to learn, but often procrastinate. And due to various commitments, the completion rate uh, even for a MOOC, uh, massive open online courses is quite low. Uh, experience assessment uh, is, of course, quite rigorous, but it's very time efficient and it's very rewarding way of an HR professional to become a member of the CIPD. And uh, this experience assessment model is uh, an excellent choice if you have the current experience 
uh, to meet this membership standards for the grade you want to join. Um, obviously, it's associate CIPD, chartered MCIPD, or a chartered FCIPD, a chartered fellow. Um, um, I also receive queries from HR professionals uh, about this program, and I, I would all, I also be coaching my HR colleagues in my company for this certification. And why I would say is it gives you a, an opportunity to take stock of what you have accomplished in the last five years, and you are able to match that with the professional map and see what impact you have created. So it is, it's a it's a great learning experience. I would say, yeah. So now this brings us to the uh, the main course, which is experience assessment. Now, so tell us about your journey. How was it? How how did you start? And how was your experience? And uh, what great learnings you had during this journey? Wow, that was uh, excellent, I would say. Uh, what I really liked is I could audit my HR experience uh, with a professional map, and that's into three segments. That's the core knowledge, core behaviors, and specialist knowledge. And uh, I can measure the impact I could create, the value that I could bring to my job, the HR profession, the business we are part of, the stakeholders, and I mentioned earlier, even with the community too. Um, I could pull out a portfolio of things that I accomplished and support with evidence. And that was a great exercise. And this is at a higher level of analysis and synthesis level of learning rather than you comprehend and apply it. You know, you're, you're not just remembering and reciting and producing. So the level of learning is, uh, is a great experience. And CIPD provide you with a lot of material to read. They, the main guide is the professional map, as I said. Um, and it's a great self-realization when you make your reports that are evidence-based, outcome-driven, uh, it's principle-led, and it's real-time work demonstrating evidence of impact in your work. And the certification journey uh, you know, made me dissect my last five years of professional work. And it was an eye-opener, absolute eye-opener, and a satisfying experience at the same time. Now, I'm very much conscious of how I create value and impact uh, within my area of influence. Uh, now I'm more exposed to the world of research and material from CIPD to tap in. And as you grow in your career, you know, we, we should also focus on how you give back to the younger HR professionals. And I'm more mindful of that. So overall, the experience of the experience assessment is makes your uh, working professionals that make it very easier. It is experience-based so that you can take stock of your uh, rich experience in uh, your career and what you can do, what you have done. So, and that makes the whole process which much easier. Now, uh, we have spoken about the HR certifications, the journey of your for the CIPD and other HR certification programs. And uh, I, I personally, I know you are a, you are one of the HR leader who continuously go for continuous learning, and uh, a lot of people can take a great uh, learning from a professional like you who continuously develop himself or herself despite of years of experience you have. Uh, that brings me to one question: that uh, just having your MBA and a global HR certification is enough for you to grow. Um, and I will add here, how important it is to understand your organization's business for HR professionals. Uh, let me take it from my example. Uh, HR is a people profession and my industry, hospitality is also people industry. Uh, the key behavioral indicators of employees is critical for the success of this business. We interact with human beings, we serve them, and you know the, the, the key element is how we are able to make that impact in people. As human capital experts, you should align the HR profession to deliver business results. So HR leaders are there to be stakeholders in driving the bottom line. Uh, in all school thought, HR is to cut manpower cost and strengthen the bottom line. Today, the profession requires strong HR leaders um, who has in-depth understanding of the business. 
in my case, uh, I'm a graduate in hotel management. That helps me immensely. I understand uh, the nuances of the business uh, being a graduate in that. And understanding the HR uh, aspects too, I'll be able to amalgamate and put that to ensure that I work in the interest of the business to align my HR strategies to accomplish business results. And there you become a key business partner. Yes, we need HR leaders, as I mentioned earlier, to be organizational engineers, coaches, and activists. But more than anything, you work for the business and you need to align the strategies to ensure that you are able to deliver that to the best, uh, you know, able way. Now you know the 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 these uh, new breed of HR leaders are changing the equation of how HR has been is being perceived today. Earlier perception was HR is these are the guys who are uh, working for time and attendance, or they have to you know you want to organize a picnic, you know birthday parties and all. This is what the you know the mentality and the thought of the people are, and the changing in the perception of how. HR is adding on the top line and the bottom line of the organization. It's a totally a different ball game where the HR professionals are venturing into and they're continuously evolving their initiatives. Now that brings us to the very, very pertinent point. The future HR leaders of tomorrow, especially young peoples who are choosing the HR profession now, they come with a different set of mindset, the different set of expectations. And there are other people who are in the, who are already, they have crossed the junior HR leadership role. They are into the mid management role. And at times, many of these HR leaders, they face something called a midlife crisis. You know, they get stuck. They can't go move beyond, you know, where they have reached. So now what is your advice to such HR leaders, young HR leaders and the leaders who are in the mid of their career. Uh, you, you, you mentioned the word young HR leaders, and I would start from there. Now, several surveys have shown that most businesses are still out of sync with the millennial priorities. They are the future leaders, and these are the people who are in that mid-segment at this point. And in order to attract the leaders of tomorrow, uh, be it an HR leader or in other aspects, there certainly has to be a recognition and understanding uh, that the ethos and, and the benefits that younger people seek in a role that has changed with a far greater emphasis on a business social attitudes. And this has to change. How they value the, uh, the benefits and how they value uh, what is important in a business have to be understood. And HR leaders should focus more on building the organizational culture our uh, the chairman and ceo he is called as a guardian of the culture and uh, we the organizations build culture and hr leaders should bring strategic change and my role is the hr process would go on and my role in my organization is to bring about that strategic change and they should be in the forefront of i would say organizational development and design and they should use a systematic approach application of behavioral science uh, to drive organizational performance. Uh, your earlier question, you asked me about how you're able to drive business. So if you are able to amalgamate all this, I think that's where the future lies. I'm talking particularly for the HR, young HR professionals. And um, this would make them much more effective and impactful. How about uh, the HR leaders who are in the mid career you know they have reached to the you know mid career roles and they are not able to break you know that uh, their mindset uh, you know how to break how to make break that mindset and go to the next leading or leadership roles how they can how they can push themselves through that is it through the global hr certification programs or is it to enhance their some Kind of a specific skills or they need to understand where their you know priorities are and how to align themselves how how they should uh, make their their career strategy if you uh, continue to do what you've been always be doing your result is going to be the same 
and um, maybe uh, I think I've seen quite a number of places where it's a it's a firefighting, and you 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 have enough reasons to be uh, spending your whole day or not having time. But to find time and to make those changes, even investing in in yourself to make the difference, um, certification certainly that's that's uh, definitely helps. Uh, it could be by learning, having learning from the mentors, learning outside the industry, and uh, learning makes a lot of difference. And certainly, certifications of advanced nature, international recognized certifications, will give you that edge uh, over others, and it gives you the competencies and knowledge to be effective, and that is going to make your performance too. So, I would encourage young HR professionals to take stock of what their competencies are existing and what they should be able to the need to advance to a next level. So they should find a reason to see, uh, meet up an HR leader in the industry and learn from them. Certifications definitely help. Uh, understanding of your business at the, uh, earlier when you asked, if you have not adequate experience and knowledge about your industry, perhaps you should gain that. And I would say at the top of it would be the knowledge which you gain, the skill which you gain. So certification definitely is uh, on the top. You know, in, uh, Jolly. I initially I spoke about um, the the how the current uh, environment is. You know, the volatile environment, the COVID environment, and you know that what kind of a situation we are on the. Some say on on second wave is coming. Some say the third wave is coming. Some say the fourth wave is going to hit, and there are a lot of uncertainty. And I gave the metaphor of you know pencil that how we all can learn as we undergo these painful circumstances, situation, challenges, and all. How do we evolve? Now, just coming back from your point of view, just want to understand that how. In this volatile, you know, we, we heard about the VUCA world, we heard about the ruptured world, and this is how it is, you know, uh, more and more terms are emerging. How one can shape his or her career during these stressful times or distressful times or these stressing times, I say. That's a good question. Um, volatility, uncertainty, uh, complexity, ambiguity existed in various forms and in varying intensity. And these are not new to the mankind. We had the plague, the smallpox, malaria, the mad cow disease. It all came and, you know, uh, the mankind managed all of that. And the world saw several wars and economic depression, and we recovered from that. Uh, we just need to stay positive, make changes for what is in our control make incremental changes in those uh, that you can influence. Uh, we need to invest in ourselves and think this is the best time to invest. And uh, not only in you, your team, uh, for improving knowledge, skills, attitudes, uh, besides physical and emotional well-being. And uh, this is very important that, that people need to be emotionally or physically even fit. You also mentioned, uh, uh, you know, the question was about how you are able to manage through this uh, uncertainty. Many people talk about the new normal and maybe perhaps tomorrow we'll say the old abnormal. Um, so it's about how we are able to, you know, stay positive and um, able to focus on what we can make small impacts and make strategic decisions. Johnny, one of the, uh, you know, uh, attendees here, uh, Mohammed Salim al Bish, and he has got a very uh, interesting question that, how we can energize the engagement of employees uh, during these times and how we can do more engagement activity. Do we need to do more engagement activity in this pandemic times? And uh, how we can do that? Um, you mentioned earlier that, you know, the typical HR function is to have a lot of activities and games and so on. Um, we talk about team building too. You can take uh, people to any far, uh, you know, across in the world. And that, in my personal opinion, by having a game, it is not going to make a difference much in a team building. And the engagement in that also, the word is to have that emotional connect. And when you, you can have a lot of ways in which you show that you care. 
um, your employees are not just one personality. They are different. They are different teams. They are different, uh, you know, backgrounds they come from. The way in which if you have initiatives to do, whether you care for them, um, even uh, I have come across where when you have a chat with an employee uh, on a quarterly basis, sit and discuss um, his personal development plan, understand what his aspirations are, uh, have a chat with them, have a tea and have a constant dialogue with them to help them move up their career or manage their, uh, listen to their problems, help being a coach for them to make them be more effective. And these are all sort of very many ways in which you can bring about that engagement. Uh, of course, all your games and fun can also happen on the side. Definitely that also helps. But it's about how you care and how HR people can build that trust and, that, and exhibit that care on behalf of the organization and also at an individual level. That helps a great in engagement. <laughs>
I would say is basic HR function and uh, how you're able to align those in the business interest. Thanks, Jolly. And then we got a very uh, nice comment that these, this small meeting to connect with the team is what we miss most of the time. Thank you for addressing it. That's another comment. Uh, Jolly, thank you so much. And we had uh, a great session. And, and now the Global Society since it has come to the come to Thailand now to meet up with you and have a cup of coffee with you. And that's in the late evening. Thank you for your time. And it was great having you. And uh, for to our viewers, you know, these are difficult times. And I uh, gave a metaphor of you know, a pencil because we can become, we can cry winning or we can become as useful as pencil and continue learning as we encounter these difficult, challenging situations and joyful situation as well. Thank you so much, Jolly, and it was great having you. And we wish you all the best in your career and continue leaving these positive vibes and positive marks as you go. Our good luck and the very best of luck to you in your future endeavors. Thank, Thank you, you so much. Thank you.